All right, Australia win the toss. They elect to bat. It's been raining in Sydney. We've got a rain delay as we speak. Australia are none for eight after starting. Well, some weird ass running between the wickets, but other than that, they've done a pretty <laughs> nice job, the Australian pair. And I'm stuck here in, uh, in Melbourne. I've just had a little hiatus. Uh, it's been a, a couple of years' worth, but uh, I've, I'm staggering to the line for the Sydney Test. But I look at the screen in front of me, and I've got broadcasting royalty, and I need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, of course, Andy Lee's been part of the broadcast the whole summer, been magnificent. His great mate, Hamish Blake, is having an extended birthday celebration, <laughs> and he's wandered in as well. Welcome to you both. Uh, good morning, JB. Look at this. Day one of the test, and uh, day 31 of my 40th <laughs> birthday <laughs> celebration, and we roll on here. Re big special shout-out, too, to the crowd that's turned up to really bring in my 40th year, first year in style. I appreciate everyone that's turned out. JB, of course, uh, this test, people worry that it's getting a bit boring considering Australia are just thumping uh, England, so I've yep. in the big guns here to yeah. come Commentate alongside me. What, Hamish what? has obviously been uh, commentating a lot of grade cricket just over the last month, and he's finally been <laughs> elevated. He's like Scotty Bowling. And I expect to see six for seven from six, him in the next 25 six, minutes. Six great <laughs> jokes from seven attempts. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's stats that is unheard of from me. My previous best is two from 45. <laughs> So, Hame, walk me through the last month, mate. 40, you only turned 40 once. What's uh, it entailed? Look, we d I did. I had a very quiet 40th. Uh, it was December 11th uh, for those playing along. Um, <laughs> but Ando and I, you know, initially, in the, the initial plan was what if we went, you know, did three days in Brisbane or something. And just with family commitments, that now that I live in Sydney, that got whittled down to what about just yep. one day in Sydney? <laughs> Which I'll take. I'll take. And yeah. it's bloody great to be here. Um, We've got famous memories of you. And I, a Brisbane test. And on I, we've, you, you we've done the first a, ball. You ended up on a drum kit at uh, some venue at the. Illegally uh, on a drum kit, <laughs> asked to leave. Um, <laughs> karaoke is one thing, but I think walking onto the stage and playing someone's drum kit at a, at a venue is frowned upon. So, look, we've had. And on I, we, you know, we can't. I, if I had it my way, we'd. we'd well, we'd have 25 days of cricket, which is not going to happen this summer, test cricket, but we'd have the full five tests, which will be about 16 days, the way <laughs> things are going. But, um, but it's, it's amazing to be here. For people not watching. Andy, yeah. what have you told Haim about the way Triple M go about commentating cricket? Have you given him some insights? All I said to him, it's a race to get your stint so you get your invoice in. Yeah, I hear, I'm hearing a lot about invoice. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard the word invoice four times since I've come in the room. I'm actually, sorry if I seem a bit distracted, I'm just searching online for a mobile invoicing app. <laughs> So I could just make sure I get my hours in. So do you guys need my ABS? Like, I don't have one, but could I, could I, do I do PAYG? How does it work? I said to Hamish, if there's ever a rain delay or if England aren't going so well and it looks to be cut short, watch people putting their hand up for the early sessions. Yeah. That's where it comes up. Howie, I mean, obviously, the Andy king just, of it. I mean, I know you're in, you're in your, your kitchen there, JB, and we're here at the ground, but Andy's dangling a tip jar out the window. <laughs> <laughs> we really are. There'd be triple as people are here for the love of the game and invoicing. I know people. All I know is uh, this: yep. when you two threaten an invoice, the people that run our company, the blood just drains. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. Do you know what? Because it's my birthday and I feel extremely lucky to be here, I am going to offer my services pro bono for today. Oh, just, really? I, just I, lovely I, to I be am not. here. <laughs> I, you know, it's the pink test, and I, so I'd like to donate my my fee to Andy. What we should point out, though, JB, I know people listen to the the, uh, the cricket now and don't bother watching it because we're so good at this commentary thing. Yep. But yeah, uh, it you is have sunny. dominated. It is it's sunny. sunny now. Here so people are sunbaking in the crowd. The <laughs> covers are going to come off any second. Uh, you, can, you wouldn't believe it. It is sunny. Pe a nice JB, coming from the front. People have got those under the chin reflector boards out that old people on cruise ships <laughs> use, <laughs> calling for the oil. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why the umpires. Out there. He's the only one with an umbrella up. Tell you what, what, yeah, the what here we go. Deal. Covers coming off. Yep. Ground stuff. Covers and coming off. What a I love the ground stuff. When when the rain hits and they run out, there's two blokes, and yes. you'd know this very well, JB, but I love watching it live. Mm. Two blokes that run for the stumps. Yep. And because the ground stuff come from one end, it always does seem like a race to go for the nearest stumps. <laughs> yep. And the penalty for losing the foot race is you have to go for the furthest stumps. A absolutely. <laughs> it, it seems like when back in the day where they allowed uh, players on the ground after an AFL football match, yeah. It was always that sprint to, to try and take yeah. the and, and it's an early mover advantage, too, because if you're second on the ground, you don't really know what to do. <laughs> What's the name of the little uh, Toyota camera that's driving around? What's his name? 
Oh, I don't think that's part of the seven coverage, so JB wouldn't Fox know. Rover, yes, sorry, <laughs> no. JB. He he went, went, no he idea, Holmes. <laughs> well, he almost, got, he almost <laughs> Contractually, you can't say it. <laughs> I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of any sport <laughs> that lies outside my contractual. See, this is the great thing about being an unpaid free agent. I can mention anyone. <laughs> I think it's a tailor-made golf little camera. Yeah. That's the right, one you're referring to. Spot on. My <laughs> mistake. It's, it's, the, um, it's, the triple, it's the triple M um, boombox that drives around the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Powered by Cooper's Mild Ale, I think. <laughs> Um, no. JB, you but it did almost get run over, which was good fun to see. There we go. <laughs> you talked of the nonsense running between wickets uh, between Harris and Warner. Were there blokes when you played that you preferred not to bat with because you thought they were so terrible at running between the wickets? Yeah, there were a couple. I've, I actually started playing with a bloke called Graham Wood from WA who was notoriously horrendous as a runner between the wickets. Um, but when you get older, Andy, you realise it's every man for himself in this game. So um, you just say no and stay where you are. That tended to work for me. Well, uh, another question in with the calls, right? Mm. I mean, there's no, there's weight, there's no run, there's weight on. <laughs> Everyone has their own style. Does that develop over time or do you? Well, I, I've always thought Michael Clark was a bit of the start of that. He, you know, he used to sort of wave his bat at his, his other bloke and say <laughs> no run. Yeah. And it sort of, and then Davey boot, Warner picked up on it. It was just... It used to be just yes or no really loudly or wait and that was it. I, but I, sort I, of I question the addition of run onto no run because yeah. we know what no means. Yeah. I yes. mean, these and guys are playing at the top level. I know, what, run, I know what no means. And run means run. Yeah. So if you joke yeah. on the no, <laughs> you're suddenly in all sorts of trouble. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, one of the worst calls you can make is no problems for a run. <laughs> or, I mean, I'll, that is I'll a get confusing back to you. one. Yeah. I'll get back to you. Could be a nice one. Or like, yes, let's wait. That's a bad, <laughs> that's a bad call. Uh, you two are bringing common sense into this discussion and there isn't any. Tell me, Haim, how have you found the members at the SCG? Now you're a resident of Sydney, you'd be regularly here in the summer and the winter. They're a different breed. They tend to be chinoed up and a desert yeah. boot and look, a, tell you what, a popped collar. Uh, because... He's uh, in the desert boots, JB, well, but he hasn't this. popped his collar yet. JB, Andy, <laughs> Andy hasn't told me what we're doing after the game, so we're going out for dinner, right? So I've had to Ooh. dress for dinner as well, which is a big call to make at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep. It is. And I've got jeans and boots on. Well, the weight and right. as we, as we the were weight walking in... And wearing tops as, as, we're going, as, as, we, as, yeah, as we were walking in, everyone's in shorts. Yeah, uh, because it's a cricket, and I got a bit nervous. Uh, but then you see the members, and you feel okay. There's, a, there's, I don't have RMs on. I've just got a regular kind of, um, <laughs> it's almost a blundstone, really, to show that I'm still in touch with the common man. But there are a lot of RMs in the building. And what about Chrissy and you, you, you too? What did you get up to? Was it family uh, only, or did you get mates involved? In it, it was family only for me. It was legally mandated by New South Wales Health. <laughs> <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Stay at ho, ho, home. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, my wife, um, just after we did the presents for the kids, just after we discovered that Santa had come, uh, she pulled a negative rat test, yeah. or a positive rat oh, test, I no. should say, yeah. the negative version of, of the yeah. rat test. So that was a quick pivot for the next seven days at home. But she's Ooh. all fine. Everyone's fine. I've managed to dodge it. But um, the Boxing Day test obviously started for you. Yeah, I was so. wrapped. I was, I was like, here we go, Boxing Day test. And then... Um, Scotty, I'm very happy for you, Scotty, and I know you've had a wonder. I mean, it's a wonderful personal highlight, six for seven, but you really did cost me a lot of couch time. It's not about me, it's not about me, and Winnie the Ashes is terrific, but it was, that was, uh, that was a shame. Australia none for eight after winning the toss and electing to bat. Mini rain delay, we're in the middle of it at the moment. And as you just heard, the tailor-made golf scoreboard, none for eight, the new uh, carbon twist face, 60 layers of carbon, Andy Lee's yes. already got his order in for the stealth from tailor-made. We've got I Australian... <laughs> Entertainment royalty with us in the form of Hamish and Andy. It's Hamish's extended 40th birthday, so... And as a special treat, I've got to come and visit Andy at work. <laughs> Andy's doing Bring Your Mate to Work Day. Uh, oh, he's, what an honour. What an honour to be in the commentary box. First time I've, I think it's the first time I've ever worn these kind of headphones. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit weird for me as well, because the other thing is Hamish and I often say things off mic to each other, but the you mic... Can't, you can't get away from the you microphone here, it's mic stuck to your head. <laughs> it follows your mouth around here, so... so pro if you're tuning in, welcome, first of all, to Triple M, excellent choice in the commentary team, and um, you might hear Ando and I say something that ends our career, because <laughs> we, we think we're off mic. <laughs> there um, we go, we see tractors leaving the ground, there's a bit of outfield scraping going on, jeez, we've got to be minutes away here. Uh, JB, when yep. the rain comes down... Who wants to come off? It seemed like Warner stopped immediately and started looking at the umpire. Is it just not fun to bat in the rain? Oh, it depends how, how bad it is and how consistent it is. Oh, I'm surprised both teams wanted to get off as quickly as it looked like they did. Yep. The conditions look good to me. 
By the way, 11.45, we're going to get a restart, so about six minutes. Okay, that's great. Um, but once you're out there, and both batsmen are sort of out there now, I, I much preferred once you're out there to stay, to be honest. Yeah, what's the concentration break restart. like, even, even for 15 minutes? Yeah, well, that's it. Then you've got to go back in and then refocus and start again, and I, I would just prefer to keep going. But... Dave, you know, Davey Warner's bloody played a hell of a lot of cricket. He knows what he's doing. But this is the bit that I can't stand in our game. So I can see the tractors going around with a rope. Yeah. Why aren't we playing? It's, as Hame said, it's been sunshine now for half an hour. Why aren't we out there playing? <laughs> can I just ask, as someone that mops up a lot of spills on the kitchen floor because I have <laughs> kids. Yeah, doesn't take this long, does it? The rope. The rope is interesting because they drag the rope around the outfield between two tractors. After that's absorbed a bit of water, isn't it just dragging a wet rope around? <laughs> no, no, sk- no, what are you, what are you skimming? It's not an absorbent rope, What are you mate? skimming? What are they trying to do is take the, the water off the top of the surface so it gets to the bottom. Yeah, but what I, mean, what I mean is once that rope is wet, yeah. it's just going to flick it up and drop it behind the rope, isn't it? Yeah, that's just the whole point of it. It's not an absorbent rope. The, the whole point is just to drop the, 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 the water. You're listening to irrigation tips from Andy. My, my dad, my dad, my dad <laughs> ran a spring, an irrigation company for his whole life. He'd be so wrapped to know that finally my career is <laughs> sitting on the radio talking about irrigation. Correct me if I'm wrong, JB, but these, uh, these grounds drain so bloody well if they take yep. the water off the top and try and get it to the bottom. Oh, so it's a squasher. It's the squash. Or, or I'm worried. Yeah. I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking that it was going to flick over the rope and just land behind the rope and no, laugh at the rope. <laughs> no, it just fl- flicks down and settles underneath and drains. Squashing the it down. Yeah, that's what you hope. That's it. Um, hey, um, Haim, tell me this uh, because we've chatted to Andy all summer. He's been brilliant. But what about you? Do, do you revel in the burying of England? Do, do you have any? I do. Sympathy? Do you like? How, how are you an Australian look, fan it, it, that just cannot wait to see him get belted? Yeah, oh, look, I am, and I. I do. I mean, of course, you love the contest, but I, I've got to admit and say, I just love a contest with the guarantee that, of course, everything's going to be okay at the end of the day. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was. It has been a really one-sided series, but but it's still the Ashes, you know. It's still oh, hard, and everyone and, 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 it, and it's sort of like, as well as being, you know, being a, a Melbourne a Demon supporter, it kind of feels a bit similar to the way that our whole last season <laughs> felt, where you're like. <laughs> You're not comfortable. I just, I just don't feel comfortable. Maybe it is for being a lifelong day supporter, but you don't feel comfortable until you're in, in footy, until you're about 10 goals ahead with about four minutes to play. And I, I've got no issues watching an Ashes where, you know, we're winning by an innings. I, I still loved it. Terrible news here, JB. They yeah. are putting the covers back they on are. for the lightest rain possible. Most of the rain isn't even making it to the <laughs> to the ground. It's, it's burning giving up, up in the atmosphere. It's burning up in the atmosphere and giving up halfway down the, sta- the, the stand. I don't know why they do this. Uh, I've got a question for you, JB, which might cover some time. Mm-hmm. If you go to a grade cricket, a, 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 a club cricket ground and park your car alongside it during a match, is it that at your own risk? <laughs> <laughs> what, you're worried about the ball being hit by a six? Is that what your well, issue is? I think I, know just... where, I think I know where Ender's going with this, and I won't lead the witness. But, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a question that's dear to our heart. <laughs> um, and you might know more about, like, a, a, yeah, cr- a club-level cricket. Or... Mm. Is it park at your own risk? Yes. Within what diameter of the ground? Within what <laughs> radius of the ground? Like a, like a 20 metre band of the ground? I'd say all adjoining streets, because actually, Andrew, the one we're talking about was it was a street. It was, it was a street, street next to it. It was a street next Definitely in the car park. If you park in the car park next to the cricket club and yep. there's a game on, 100% yep. at your own risk. JB, That's it. it cost uh, Hamish and I several thousand dollars. Because we... I, I You're not going to believe... This sounds like such a made-up story, but it is it's we, phenomenal. I mentioned uh, in, earlier in the tests that uh, Hamish and I... Hamish is our opening batsman and wicketkeeper for yeah. my team, the Mancats, which takes on my brother's Man mates. Cats. The, my <laughs> brother's mates, the Beamers. And it's the Beamers <laughs> versus the Madca- Mancats, three matches a year, every, every year. Yep. Yep. That's all our old bodies can handle. We, 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 play, we dress like it's a test and we prepare like it's a twist, but it is 2020. <laughs> it's a 2020. It's, under tw- it's basically under 12's rules. <laughs> Full whites. We're in the baggy blue. They're and, in the baggy red. Do we have, do we have nine ball and over maximums? No, no. No, no. Full. Okay, so it's not full <laughs> under 12 rules. Uh, you've got to bowl six legal balls. But uh, you're allowed one international player each. And in this particular year, my brother had recruited Peter Hanscom, yep. who Ooh. was playing bloody well for Australia at the time. Yep. Uh, for the, the best be- player of the year. For then. the Beamers. And we had Bob Quiney. Yes. Uh, who was also going well with the bat for Victoria uh, as, as a man cat. Now, Bob came out to bat and we did need fast runs. 
and he's hooked a ball for six and it's landed on a bloke's car. Imagine, <laughs> really, great shot. It's cleared the ground, cleared the oval, into the street next to the oval, landed on the roof. Big and, audible donk. And this guy's come out and he's complained. He's come across to me and I'm scoring. I'm taking the scoring job very seriously. So you don't talk to me during and over at the scoring as I'm in the old form of the scorebook. I'm doing the dots and the dashes and working down through. He's having an argument with me. I said, mate, if you park next to a cricket club, a cricket club and a cricket game, you know a game's on. That's your, your own fault. Can't buy a house next yes. to the airport and complain about the plane noise. So no. the argument takes about three or four balls, and uh, he walks off in a huff at the exact time as Bobby Quiney again plays the hook shot, and it's going far short of going out of the ground. Uh, and this particular ground, the fence was just a singular metal pipe. You know these park, you know, they just get one steel rail going around the whole yep. of the park. Yep. Yep. The ball lands exactly on, on the, the bar. On the bar. <laughs> Pops up in the air and then travels another 20 metres to land on the same car. <laughs> <laughs> As the guy is about to get back in and he blew his top and threatened to sue us. And uh, Hayman and I fixed <laughs> Up the bill. He wasn't interested at the time. From memory, our, our argument to him was, look, regardless of the money, you have to be amazed at the odds of this happening. <laughs> like, it, that, that's really the takeaway from this, not the damage to the car. Like, so it's let me ask you to a question then. Same, same uh, dog, different leg action. Yeah. I play golf regularly at Port Ferry, which is a beautiful place, yes. by the way. And the ninth, the you might know it, Andy, the ninth goes along the main drag. Mm -hmm. And there's a big sign there that says, wait till there are no cars before you tee off <laughs> because any damage is on the golfer. And I always think to myself, if you do tee off and you hit a car and that car pulls up and goes, right, who was that? What's, right, what's stopping all four golfers go, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and, and not only that, but by the time they sort of pull up, get out, find the golfer, there'll probably be a new round of guys coming through, like a new set of blokes anyway. So, I mean, yeah. it, you just turn up to the clubhouse and there'd be a lot of... I think, 100 guys dressed as golfers. I think that's yeah. a classic case, JB, of a club putting up a sign that they cannot. <laughs> tried. We tried with the sign. <laughs> go, go, uh, we tried. Go through you know, it. No, no bombing in the pool. Oh, well, we tried. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, <laughs> we gave it a go. <laughs> no peeing no, in the pool. Oh, at the swim-up bar, guys, try not to pee in the pool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, sure. like who did that? <laughs> well, we, well, we put up a sign. We gave it a, gave I don't even know what go. you're talking about. 